oxygen hemoglobin saturation curve. This is cool stuff. Um, so each of these variables here you should be comfortable with. Let's talk about them briefly. Partial pressure of oxygen on the x-axis. You know kind of some of the range of these and it's in millimeters of mercury. Um, that's due to fresh air coming in from the, the atmosphere is going to be refreshing that. But this partial pressure could be anywhere along the systemic circuit. Um, this axis is oxyhemoglobin, which is percent saturation. So how many oxygens are bound to hemoglobin? Here it's zero, that's zero percent. This is one oxygen bound, 25%, two, 50%, and three, 75%, for 100% saturated. Notice we can look at values in between all of those four categories because although one given protein of hemoglobin can only fall into one of these four categories, we're looking at like the total saturation of like a pool of blood um, or a drop of blood. So we can have any value of saturation um, in between those values. And I've already said it, and you can see from like this graph that these two things are going to be related. So partial pressure of oxygen is going to um, determine percent saturation of our, of our hemoglobin. And I'll try to draw this curve here. The relationship is not going to be linear. Oh, I'm going to try one more time. It's S-shaped. So I'm going to try to have like this increase here and then a slow increase here. Okay, what this shape represents is a cooperative relationship, facilitative, as one oxygen molecule binds, it facilitates the binding of another. It's actually a change in protein structure that causes this. So once we have one oxygen molecule bound on average, so that's 25%, the change in partial pressure to get that first one was, was I mean, my graph, my numbers are not perfect. So I don't wanna actually look at the numbers. It's a, it's a pretty big change across our x-axis. The second oxygen is not gonna take as big a change in partial pressure. There's this big range here where the curve is steep. A small change in partial pressure of oxygen equals a large change in percent saturation. And it's in this middle range here where we want to be able to have um, unloading and loading of oxygen occur. It is going to taper out at the top up here um, for that final oxygen molecule that's bound. This ensures like optimal pickup and delivery um, uh, in the system. Um, this is gonna help us understand oxygen binding and release. I want to tell you, and I'll, actually I'll do it here and then we'll look at the, the figure that's a little better. This is going to be the partial pressure. Well, you should know that partial pressure. What, what is this? This is in, in the systemic. Well, I, should, I shouldn't say systemic. Let's say um, entering the systemic circuit. So after passing through the alveoli, after passing through the lungs. Somewhere down here is going to be it, it, that's the range. Anywhere from like here to here is going to be what's happening after the systemic circuit. So after the body tissues, systemic tissues. Let's look at this with a picture that's more detailed. All right. So this is the same figure I showed, but we've got some extra detail here and it's probably a little neater. So this is at the lungs, right? This would also be in, in entering systemic. We've got a high partial pressure of oxygen and 
almost fully saturated um, hemoglobin, 98%. You may have heard of this percent um, of pulse oximeter, which is highly relevant for um, keeping track of your, your blood oxygen. Um, people talk about this with, with coronavirus. 98% is what it should be in a healthy individual. Down here, this is we're, we're at the tissues, right? We're losing oxygen to the tissues, which is fine. That's what they're supposed to be. So in this case right here, this is this one. I'm not going to rewrite it. Um, you might have 40 millimeters of mercury at the tissues. That is actually what we the number we used. Um, it's about 75% saturated. So at rest, your hemoglobin actually stays about 75% saturated even when it's leaving those tissues. That's nice because then if we start exercising, we've got extra to give away, right? So at exercise, we might go down to here. That's not on this graph here. Let's, let's fix that. Okay. This might be um, in the tissues. I'm going to write the same thing that's written here, but when exercising. we are going to allow for more O2 unloading for those exercising tissues. 